Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're in the VAB today, taking a look at the Omega 1A, capped off with a uh, Zenith Blue 4 capsule and command pod. Um, I know we've uh, we've test flown this, and we're pretty sure it's good enough to make it to the moon. But I think we're going to make some changes as far as maybe integrating this service module stage and this AJ10 stage. Uh, I think we can save ourselves some uh, weight and some delta V just by going ahead and integrating the two together. It also saves us a stage and some weight in hopes that uh, maybe these this uh, S4-5200 stage will be a little more useful as far as circularizing our orbit and all of these other nice things. Um, now one of the things that we do have to deal with here is that our life support Okay, we can just go ahead and get rid of that for a minute. Yeah, our life support tanks can only have a diameter of 1.5 meters, and that kind of sucks. Um, this is basically the a couple of tanks here, really, all the way down until we... Oh, I did not want to do that. What I do want to do is disconnect this stage and put you down here. And we're going to... Yeah, we are. We're just going to go ahead and delete that. And then we're going to delete that. Um, we do have resource transfer enabled on this decoupler, so we don't really need to do much with that, but we need to figure out how to build a better stage below it. And the first part of this is going to be including an Agena avionics package, also conveniently 1.5 meters because we're going to need to deal with a lot of extra tonnage to support our uh, fuel and drive stage and all of these other nice things. So let's uh, start building something out here. I think instead of using that AJ-10 we're going to go with an Asteris engine or maybe a cluster of Asteris engines. 1.5 or so and we don't really need to stretch it out I plan on putting some strappy on -y tanks okay we still got hydrazine battery uh, poop cans standard life support plus whatever's in the capsule itself so engines this beautiful Asteris engine I think we will Oh man, I've ruined that already. Alright, come on. Oh, that might be part of the problem. There we go. Let's base those out down there. We won't have the launch escape system. We don't want that factored into our Delta V readings and oh yeah, some fuel. Yeah, that's 1100 meters per second. Uh, I think we had like two grand or so or 2400 in the AJ-10 stage plus 700 from a command pod stage. So we're a far cry away from where we were, but we We'll make some improvements. Yeah, that's about what we want. Highly pressurized aerozine. 50 of nitrogen tetroxide. 3200. All right. We're doing great, and we're not even anywhere close to done yet. I'm going to cap these off. Now I need them a little longer than that. That'll do. Oh, derp, derp. Scene.
Okay, it's a tiny bit cheaty. Can't really move those engines in, so we're going to move them up. Just to kind of keep with a more uniform aesthetic here. we paint these. I guess that one in there doesn't matter so much. And these out here will. How do we feel about Atlas? I can dig it. Thirty four hundred. I mean, that's a transfer to the moon all on its own, and we're hoping that we're going to get uh, a good kick from our fifty two hundred stage. We are. We're not done. We still need to stack some extra weight on these. RCS thrusters closer to the bottom there and to power both the command pod and the uh, avionics package we're probably going to need more than four man that's quite a hit I know we don't really need the shielded ones but they do produce more power these are 121 watts total, whereas these are 189 watts, and that is not an insignificant amount. Although putting them so high is going to affect the ability for the fairing to cover them. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. That's totally going to interfere with the thrusters. Or is it? We've got those thrusters on a boom. Oh, those probably don't have enough oomph to do anything, do they? Dang it. Alright. We're just going to have to settle the difference. Put them right in the middle. action groups. We've got our primary boot, that's for uh, antennas. Should be uh, solars. We'll put them on toggle. Toggle. So if we end up accidentally passing through the atmosphere, you know, <laughs> we can bring them back. All right, uh, we're gonna need some thrusters for ullage. Does that clear the tank on the side thrusters? Only but barely. Make sure they're set up for hydrazine. Are in fact set up. Ooh, we have an upgrade. Upgrade. All right, that's nice. We'll take that. And we are still at thirty-four forty-one meters per second. That's not too shabby at all, really. Gives us about six minutes burn time. These do not have a rated maximum burn time. 
Thrust to weight ratio really isn't even all that bad. 0.57 for orbital maneuvering is pretty good. We've got these thrusters here, plus these thrusters here, so we should have no problem keeping control. And oogles of battery life with that thing in there. Alright, what am I forgetting, everybody? Don't really need to throw science experiments on it just yet. Ooh, did we unlock a docking port yet? No, I think that's a couple of a couple of steps away still. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't be in there. I don't think it would be in structural. It should be in utility, right? Okay. So that's that's our new command pod for the time being anyway, at least until we have sufficient upgrades. To, oh man, this is gonna suck. Can I? Yeah, I cannot adjust the height on this at all. Oh, stuck it. Nice. All right, height. Height. Sweet. All right, let's just make sure all of our action grouping is still okay. It should be down here anyway. Main engine start, launch clamps, stage set, ullage, fairing set, engine set, set, RCS, engine set. That's the launch escape system, which we can move down to after our second stage that's that engine set yeah it's pod set that's parachute and all that other nice stuff uh, we should probably go in here and lock the hydrazine tank Can we get to it oh, that's oogles of battery Ah, where is it? <sighs> Life support. Oh, crap. Yeah, that was not what I meant to do. Great. Oh, please start acting clunky right now. Okay. Myth. the time being okay so our total delta V is still shy of the 13 kilometers per second I would like to see it at why is that at, rated at a minute 30 oh do we drain fuel from this to keep it pad stable I'm sure we did yeah but only on these side tanks right yep okay that explains why the Delta V is so low and why that burn time on that first stage is not exactly what it should be. So, no big deal. Is that high enough? That is not high enough. Alright, let me put these fairings on. And just take a last look.
Eh, it's not too shabby, actually. I think we shaved a, uh, a couple of feet off our overall height. I did not check beforehand, so I really couldn't tell you. But, uh, still looks nice and uniform. I'd say we're pretty clean here. I'll take it. Is that high enough? Yes, that is high enough. All right. And the Omega Rocket is pretty much unchanged. Oops. Zenith Blue 5, which now suddenly has a build time of 159 days. Save edits. That'll do it. I don't think we're going to take a simulated test flight, at least not this episode. And yeah, that was pretty boring, wasn't it? Well, I would like to keep all of you updated as to what we're doing and why. But your supersonic flight gets done in eight days. Uh, yeah. Dang it. We're going to bump him up the list because we've got some contracts that we expect this guy to fulfill. And I've also now ruined everything that uh, I had planned so far. Some of these I am just keeping around to scrap later because... Um, well, let me do this first. Duplicate, duplicate, <laughs> duplicate, duplicate. All right. Duplicate, yeah. We're going to have a lot of things. I'm going to tie money up in things that are physical for the time being. Uh, did I click that? I don't think I clicked that. Did I click it? Uh-oh. Did I lose stuff? Well, I think KSP has uh, pooped the bed. Some things work. That's nice. Well, all right. Anyway, in about three days, we're going to take a $400,000 or credit hit for those two failed contracts. So if I can tie money up in things that I can sell back later, I can actually go ahead and go bankrupt, sell off a bunch of rockets, and keep the space program going. So there's an explanation of what I'm doing there. And uh, that's going to do it for today. I promise this won't be today's only episode because this one was really lame. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'll pick you guys up in the next episode where uh, I have no idea what we'll be doing next. But it'll probably be fun. More fun than this anyway. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.